Welcome to the instructional video series of the Adjustable Hip Square. This is segment three of a six part series in which we're going to show you how to lay out and cut a hip rafter. Uh, you can see all segments on our website adjustablehipsquare.com. We're going to cut to the field and demonstrate the use of the scale on the bottom of the square. I'm going to start with hip rafter D. This is a drawing of our mock structure which we demonstrated in segment two on this video series to give you all of the details of how we achieved and calculated these dimensions. But we're going to start with uh, hip rafter D and we'll show you that right now. This okay. is hip rafter D and we're going to show you how to lay that out using the square. Uh, we want to first tell you that the mock structure that we've put together is built on a 612 pitch. So uh, of course the square is numbered from zero to 16 and a half and you take the adjustable arm and you set it with the bottom of the arm to the line by the little six and that would start our um, uh, uh, process of putting this together. Now I've had many of you write to me and ask me about the fact that the overhang we uh, demonstrated in the um, demonstration video was uh, 12 inches and, and was that just because it was the length of the square? No, it was not. Uh, I just picked that number randomly. So in this case we're going we're gonna to start by saying that the, even though the overhang is 12 inches overall, uh, that the subfascia and the fascia board total uh, an inch and a half and three quarters of an inch totaling two and a quarter inches. We'll subtract that from our 12, but we're going to start with nine and three quarters as a framing uh, uh, number for our uh, overhang. We're going to start here by drawing our line, and you've got to keep in, keep in mind that what we are marking is the center line of this member. Now we're using dimensional lumber that is an inch and a half in width, but when we mark this, that denotes the center point. So in order to make a cut 45 degrees from each side, you can do it here. You can, there's a lot of different tricks and a lot of different ways to do it, but uh, I'm going to take and we're going to do it like so. And I want to make sure that you understand exactly what I am doing. So we're going to uh, mark it from both sides along with marking the point. And of course, this piece of lumber has a large cat face on it, which is going to be difficult to see, but I can do it on the bottom. The rafter is cut like so. Now through the magic of television, you can actually see what the rafter will look like once the end of it has been cut. So that's the same dimensions that I laid out on our starting point. From our starting point, which is the actual point of the rafter, not the heavier dark line, which is our cut line because we are cutting it at a 45 degree angle. That's a little light pencil line right here. We're gonna place the square there and we set our overhang, our rough overhang was nine and three quarters, which is right here on the scale and we mark that like so. Now this line denotes our center point right there. And of course, if we were going to cut this to actually fit the wall, then we would need to make a cut like so. And I've actually cut a little sample piece that you can see here that would show you exactly what it would look like if we did that. But there's really no reason around the outside corner to do that. But I've cut this piece to, to demonstrate for you that a lot of your measured lines, especially when we get to the layout later, start from this point, which is the, the point where the, the outer face intersects with the wall plane. So keep this in mind, but we're gonna make this cut square, and that is our center point. And we're gonna start from there counting the length of our hip rafter D, which in this case is four feet on the hip scale. So of course the square is one foot in length, we're going to mark one, we're going to mark two, three, and then four. And just like we did at the bottom, even though this is our center line, we've got to cut from a 45 degree angle on each side. like so. Now let's discuss the seat cut or the bird mouth which is the way that most of us refer to it these days. 
in the promotional video, we just picked a number at random because we weren't really putting in common rafters. We were demonstrating the tool. But in this case, we're going to talk to you more about what's likely to happen on a job site. Um, if you look at a common rafter, often the case is that the seat cut for the common rafter is cut so that it corresponds, and in our case, we're using a two before wall. So we've, we've made this seat cut three and a half inches. So the remainder, uh, uh, the plumb line from the vertical member of that seat cut to the top is actually two and one eighth. So we're gonna use that dimension um, after establishing it for our hip rafter. So let's begin. Oops, even I am prone to making mistakes. When demonstrating the layout of the hip rafter, I started inadvertently at the wrong point, and I've warned all of you about this in the past. But if you'll notice the little uh, example I've got here, you'll see that uh, when I was talking about heel height and our starting point, I started, as I've warned many of you not to do, from this corner. And of course, this is a hip rafter, and it's cut out square, and I showed, demonstrated for you and showed you the example of how if it wrapped around the corner, the, the board would be right here. We've got to come in that three quarters of an inch to begin our layout and to measure our heel height. Uh, if you measure your heel height here, your hip rafter is going to be taller than the plane of the tops of your common rafters. So be wary. It can happen to anybody. I did correct it, but I forgot to put it on the video. So be sure and start at the correct starting point, three quarters of an inch in, if your cut is square. This was the mark of a corner of our building. We're going to Continue that line all the way to the top edge. We're going to mark that two and one eighth inches that we just discussed. And then we're going to draw that line all the way out to the face of the bottom edge of the member. Now, once again, I want to remind you that this could wrap around the corner of the building, but there's absolutely no need for that. But this dimension is very important. This three quarter inch dimension right there uh, is very important and we'll need that later. We're gonna to refer to it later in other videos. Just to review through the magic of television, you can now see what the completed rafter, uh, uh, how the completed rafter appears. You can notice on the end how we've cut it to a point so that once the rafter's in place, each face planes with all the common rafter tails. You can see how we've cut the bird mouth so that the remainder is two and one eighth, measuring along the plumb line of the vertical member of the seat cut. You can see our check marks where we stepped off the four feet of the hip adjustable hip square to the top. And then of course the top has the same cut on it that the bottom has. This is a completed hip rafter, hip rafter D.